So I'd asked you to read an article by Ken Brew McLeod. We've brought him up a few times in this class, right? He's the copyright criminals, um, you know, filmmaker. And uh, he wrote this article, you know, about authenticity claims in rap. And he, you know, used his, um, you know, uh, uh, Rolodex or, you know, whatever, uh, connections to interview a bunch of rappers and look at interviews in newspaper articles, magazine articles. Um, he was able to, you know, use song lyrics, all this stuff. And he basically wanted to look at authenticity claims in music. Why do people, why do, you know, rappers particularly make claims of authenticity? And this is not, um, you know, entirely in fact, it isn't at all focused on East Coast artists. He focused on, you know, um, MCs from all over. It doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to focus on the, the New York boom bap, you know, style. But basically, you know, uh, how his, his overall research question or what he looks at is, you know, how does a subculture, right? And he's looking in the, the mid late 90s, you know, when hip hop becomes finally mainstream. It, it really isn't until the mid nineties that, that, that it happens. And it's not till then when they start to count scans for rap records and chart stuff and award Grammys and all that stuff. So just think, think about that, right? Like, okay, took, you know, over 10 years and all right, it's not a, it's not a fad, you know? And so, and then we start to really see like it become mainstream. We start to see it, you know, become pop culture, you know, popular culture. Um, and, and so he, he asked, you know, how does the subculture facing incorporation, which means, you know, becoming, um, uh, you know, mainstream, um, you know, what, what, what does, um, as you become mainstream, like how does a subculture protect itself, you know, from that um, and, and protect itself and preserve its identity, um, you know, at least, you know, uh, um, through how it talks about itself, how it thinks about itself, how it expresses itself. Um, so he asked that question, you know, like as a subculture becomes mainstream, how does it, you know, battle against, battle against that, you know? And, Basically, he comes up, you know, through all this, you know, looking and researching and stuff, he finds that, like, claims of authenticity, right, which are what it means to be real, as discourse, and discourse is the entirety of everything that creates a conversation on, on a topic. So it could be lyrics, media coverage, it could be just so many, you know, things when we think about discourse, um, you know, like, how does this subculture maintain purity? And we're talking about the hip hop subculture. How does it maintain this, this sort of pure identity as things are starting to get pimped out by various industries, clothing companies, you know, um, uh, uh, you know soda companies, all, all that stuff. So, um, you know, the main thing that he finds that as the subculture, as the subculture is facing uh, commercialism is that, you know, um, Authenticity is constructive, it's discursive, it's constructed, and it's constructed through the use of words and how, you know, people who are part of the culture, people that are part of, um, you know, the rap industry, you know, how they frame and they talk about what it means to be real and what it means to be fake, okay? Um, uh, one of the main things here is that, um, you know, these claims of authenticity, as he finds, you know, um, it starts to create in groups who's authentic, who's real and out groups, who's, who's fake, who's, who's whack, you know, and it helps to create a sort of way of defining that by using words. Um, and that's really important that, that, you know, what is real and what is fake. There is no such a actual thing as real and fake when it comes to an artist. It's, it's, it's how we talk about that artist determines if they're real or fake and how we decide collectively, discursively, 
um, what that actually means, how we give real and fake a, def a definition. Um, but it's really a way of protecting a culture. How do you, you know, as this culture becomes mainstream, right? Rappers Light didn't make rap you know, mainstream, it made it a product, you know, it, it commercialized it, but it didn't make it mainstream, mainstream. It didn't make it, you know, pop culture, you know, like it is now, you know, like hip hop, rap, whatever is a multi-billion dollar, you know, industry from the music to the fashion, to the acting, to all, all of that stuff. Okay. So what McLeod comes up with, and it's this nice little chart here, and we're going to be talking about this a lot, and you're going to really want to familiarize yourself, yourself with this, is the semantic dimensions um, of, of supporting you know, claims of authenticity. And we'll look at this primarily today in, in lyrics. Um, so we'll kind of move away from you know, beats, 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 because you know, I've been talking about the beats all the time. Um, and so uh, you can look at this, and he has like the semantic dimensions. He has, he has uh, six of them. And then what does it mean to be real, and what, the, what does it mean to be fake? And he really simply defines this. Um, makes it as easy as possible. And this is based upon, again, reviewing interviews um, and interview uh, data that he collected by talking to people, looking at you know, interviews and in, in press, and looking at song lyrics. So social psychological. Um, what it means to be real is that you stay true to yourself. And what it means to be fake is that you, you, know, you follow mass trends. And so, I mean, just look at, look at you know, look at, uh, it's hard to say what does staying true to yourself mean, right? But following mass trends. I mean, you see that in the music biz now, in, in rap, rap broadly defined, right? Someone puts out a sound that's hot, you know, that, that moves, that people buy, you know, that people party to, whatever. And then other artists keep, they mimic that, that, that vibe and that style. Okay, um, there's a racial semantic, so um, that has to do with you know what means what it means to be authentic is is black and black blackness, and what is fake is is white and whiteness, and you see this like all through all through lyrics. I mean, if you watch Eight Mile, that's like a major a major part of, of that movie, and we'll actually talk a little bit about um, you know whiteness, rap, um, and uh, in a couple in a couple units here okay the political economic um this really has to do with with what's real is the underground the non-commercial i mean you know the word underground rap didn't exist until there was overground rap or mainstream rap like it was just rap music and then in the mid 90s in this time you know as shit becomes pop okay there's underground rap and then there's, uh, you know, mainstream rap. Mm. Uh, gender sexual, these are lyrics, uh, you know, fakeness or realness has to do with being, you know, being hard, um, you know, uh, being tough, you know, all that stuff. And then being fake is the effemination, right? Like you're soft, you know, you're a bitch ass, you know. Um, you know, making those types of claims about other other MCs or other celebrities or or whatever, um, you know, often using you know uh, misogynistic or um, you know uh, totally you know homophobic uh, lyrics. Even some of the most socially conscious artists, like some of the people we'll talk about today, you know, they they used homophobic slurs, you know, um, often or often enough. Um, in, in their rhymes. Uh, social locational uh, dimension has to do what's real, the street, what is fake, the suburbs. They're coming for the suburbs. <laughs> They're coming for your suburbs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's the craziest shit I've ever heard. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, the suburbs are fake, right? And that's has to do a little bit with the racial element, right? Like who lives in the suburb, suburbs, you know, white, white people, you know, um, uh, and then cultural, right? And this has a lot to do with hip hop culture, talking about, you know, um, hip hop culture itself, your knowledge of, of hip hop culture, the history of, you know, hip hop, uh, whatever, 
Um, and then the mainstream is fake, right? So like mainstream, the commercial stuff, um, which is not cultural, it's not old school, you know, whatever. Um, it doesn't you know, pay tribute or honor or acknowledge the old school is, is what's fake. So that was the, the semantic dimensions. We're gonna look at some, um, some of my favorite songs um, still to this day, okay? Um, 